a 60 year old woman has a tumor of the apex of the right lung which of the following is the most likely consequence of compression of the sympathetic trunk by the tumor tumors affecting the apex of the lungs whether the right or the left lung are most likely compressing the sympathetic trunk the upper part of the sympathetic trunk and it should be noted that this part of the sympathetic trunk the upper part of the sympathetic trunk it contains fibers that are not only destined for intercostal nerves they are not only destined for viscera of the thorax but the most important is that it contains fibers that are destined for the cervical and cranial regions because they these fibers they ascend into the cervical sympathetic trunk to reach the head and neck the reason behind that is that the outflow sympathetic outflow from the spinal cord from the central nervous system is confined to regions that are located between t1 and l2 so above the level of t1 there are no preganglionic sympathetic fibers that arise from the spinal cord to reach the sympathetic trunk these preganglionic sympathetic fibers they have to ascend from the thoracic regions into the cervical sympathetic trunk and from there they will synapse with the ganglia of the cervical sympathetic ganglia and will be distributed to the structures located in the head and neck so if there is a tumor compressing upper part of the thoracic sympathetic trunk it will catch these ascending nerve fibers and result in consequences affecting the head and neck and the typical syndrome here is called Horner's syndrome Horner's syndrome is characterized by ptosis meiosis flushing of the face and anhydrosis ptosis because of the weakness of the upper lid the upper lid contains skeletal muscle fibers levator palpebri superioris muscle but it also contains the smooth muscle fibers which are called Muller's muscle and these smooth muscle fibers are supplied by sympathetic nerves if these sympathetic nerves are affected then this will cause weakness of Muller's muscle and result in ptosis meiosis because the dilator pupillary muscle is supplied by sympathetic fibers so if these sympathetic fibers fail then this will result in meiosis flushing because of the vasodilatation of the blood vessels of the skin blood vessels of the skin are supplied by sympathetic fibers that cause vasoconstriction and result in pallor but if these sympathetic fibers are destroyed then this will result in flushing and there will be anhydrosis because of the deprivation of the sympathetic innervation of sweat glands so let's see the options here what will happen if the sympathetic trunk is compressed at the upper part of the thorax by an apical tumor of the lung facial sweating no because as i have just mentioned it results in anhydrosis not in excessive sweating decreased salivation no because salivation is related to the salivary glands and all the salivary glands are supplied by secretomotor fibers which are parasympathetic fibers increased lacrimation again the lacrimal gland is supplied by parasympathetic fibers and not by sympathetic fibers pupillary constriction this is the correct one because the pupil has a dilator pupillae and a sphincter pupillae muscle the dilator pupillae muscle is supplied by sympathetic fibers while the sphincter pupillae muscle is supplied by parasympathetic fibers so if the sympathetic fibers are destroyed there will be overflow of parasympathetic innervation and this will result in pupillary constriction paradoxical movement of the left hemidiaphragm this only results when the phrenic nerve is affected and it is unlikely that the phrenic nerve is affected here because it is mentioned in the stem that which of the following is most likely a consequence of compression of the sympathetic trunk by the tumor mass sympathetic fibers they do not supply the diaphragm the diaphragm is formed of skeletal muscle fibers that are supplied by the phrenic nerve and not by sympathetic fibers